Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is The Wise Ones. Our topic is how understanding spirituality can help us in all aspects of life. We have a wonderful guest named Tiago joining us from Sweden. He was with us earlier in the week. We look forward to hearing from him again today. Before we bring him out, let's welcome the star of our show, Mr. Red. O'Laughlin, who went from food and our emotions this morning to the wise ones afterwards to talking heads. Let's bring him out. Hi, Red. Howdy. Good to see you again. It's been just a couple hours, but it's always good to see you. Always. Thank you. It's always good to see you too, especially since we're celebrating today as our newest book has just become an Amazon number one new release today. We just released it yesterday afternoon and bingo, there, there you go. So super excited for that working with you as well as with our illustrator MD and our two authors, Madeline Chan and Mariska Dupria. So I guess, congratulations. I guess we need to convert that, that other book to environmental tea parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the book, not only, uh, not only is it about teaching children listening skills, but it's also to teach them about how we are polluting our oceans and the impact it's having on all the sea creatures. And so we need to take responsibility and, and what better way than to teach children about this before they make the same mistakes that the adults have been making. So. Well, I am super happy, super glad sharing your joy of being another number one new book release. Uh, in addition to the best selling books that you have, I mean, just it seems like every time you turn around, there's a number one someplace in your in your writing career. So congratulations again. Well, thank you, my friend. I owe a lot of it to you because you've been my book coach through this whole thing. So um, and just yeah, quick plug for me. Yes, there are my books, some of them just me and others are collaborations with other people. So da da, fabulous. And you are also a number one best selling author. Tell us about your work. Well, I'm a researcher. I research the human body, the cellular level, chemically speaking. I look for cause and effect relationships, treat a cause, fix a problem treat a symptom and you'll always be treating symptoms. So if you know this causes that and you stop this and that stops, well, maybe that's what you need to do. Our medical industry does not treat causes. It treats symptoms. And as such, they're going to give you a pill for this or some other kind of treatment for that, but it's not really addressing the cause. And if you ask them why, what causes this? Well, it could be a half a dozen things, but that's not the, their intent. Their intent is not to treat that. That's that's another animal down the road. But their legal moral obligation is to treat what they know works, which is in most cases surgery, uh, some kind of chemo protocol, a pill, whatever it may happen to be. But it's not go home, eat healthy foods, exercise, de-stress, get a good night's sleep. Those aren't even though they're they're good for you. That's not the way our system works. So. What I do is that's where my research, my writing, my speaking, everything in those areas is where I focus my, my love of my life, chemistry. That's that's one of the things that I, 15 years of age, I fell in love with it. And I, I just sit there and I just grab hold of it every single day. Just that's that's one of those things I really, truly enjoy in life. Thanks, Red. One of your babies. Yes. <laughs> 
I want to bring out Tiago, who was uh, introduced to our platform through Dr. Madeline Chan and through Janetta Barry. I'm super excited to, to have him back on. And, you know, he's got quite a backstory. He even mentioned the word kidnapping, which gave me chills. But he's quite well educated, very well rounded, and he's taken his experiences. Uh, he's an advocate for, in so many ways, for humanity, for human rights, and he's also a student, a master's degree. We could go on and on. Let's bring him out, and we're going to talk about his work as a personal development mentor today. Welcome to the show, Tiago. Hello. Hi again. Hello. It's nice to hear. Congratulations, Jackie, for the book. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, Tiago, you, you shared an amazing uh, journey with us about some of the things that you've been through on uh, the art of creating mental health wealth. I'd like to mm -hmm. have you just summarize part of your life there so we can focus on the, the topic today, which is understanding spirituality. And when you think of people being wise, there's... Yeah. A number of ways of looking what is wise is wise just education is it is it seeing with the third eye is it seeing through your yeah. your heart and soul so tell us a little bit about your journey and then we'll get into the work that you're doing today with spirituality and personal development mentoring yes thank you i actually going to touch a little bit on the topic that uh read if I, is it read the name of red, the, uh, the, like the red color. yeah i'm sorry <laughs> i apologize red so I really like it one point that you mentioned, and I'm going to also use that on what I'm going to summarize here. Uh, I, as I mentioned before, I studied law and I worked with law. Then I went to Hungary. I worked with IT, so more like a service desk. Then in Sweden, I started to do a, one master, which I finished, and now I'm doing a second master, and I work more with this development human rights perspective. One of the things that I want to say, and also not only addressing me, but I think addressing the whole society, we really lack the sense of spirituality. A lot of a lot of situations that I see is not even about uh, just looking at the fact of money or no money is bad and materialist, but we really forget to do things that make us happy. And then money becomes something just natural. You know, we really focus sometimes so much on money that we forget to see if what we are doing is really beneficial for us. And also we sometimes think, no, society is bad when sometimes we are really not doing something that means something to us, you know, something that goes beyond that feeling that you're just working, you, you know, like when you do something that you really like, it just becomes something natural. And I really see that not only in my country, Brazil, but also in Hungary, in Sweden, and all of other people that I met, we really have this stigma sometimes that you need to do some specific uh, type of field. You need to be a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer to be happy. You cannot sometimes do something a bit of out of the box to be happy. So I can, I can say to summarize that, I think that especially when it comes to the spirituality and work with the spirituality is one thing that I see that a lot of people are liking today. And we really need to enforce this personal development, this perspective that spirituality is important. Also, to not only about the faith, but really find yourself on, on, on what you're doing, you know, having the pleasure to do that. Could you clarify the term spirituality? I think that means a lot to a number of different oh, people. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. if we start getting in religion, we get in, there's a lot of things. So what, for our purpose here today, why don't you clarify exactly what you mean so that way everybody's on the same page? Yes, of course. To me, uh, when I talk about spirituality, I think the faith, the faith that you're going to have a better day tomorrow or the faith that you're doing really something that to you it contributes to something more so faith in a way that there's going to be something good coming out of it i hope i can hear okay so well. yes and faith in in the context that you're saying is yes. this a more formal uh understanding than just a simple expectation yes Yes, I would. I would say more the the belief that's gonna be a better a better tomorrow. It's more like a beyond. Yeah, I I don't know if we are in the same same terms, but it would be more like the the feeling of hope that there is gonna be something that you really contribute, but also beneficial to yourself. That goes a bit beyond. I I, I think yeah, I think hope is is a better term when it comes to that. But yeah, yeah, hope. I think it works well. 
Tiago, is could it also be, and Red, I'd love to have your comments as well, that mm -hmm. when we think we as human beings, we think that this is all that there is and we're more important than any other creature. When we think of spirituality, I think of it as being a bigger picture that there's more than just things. There's more than just... Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's about that celebrating what is the unknown and maybe being open to that, that mm. there are, there is something greater than us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a very good experience. Thank you. Yes. That's, that's my, <laughs> something greater and, and yeah. And, and, and a good, right. We, we always need to focus on the good and, and love. I think that's the most important. So this, this greater thing in a way that have this good perspective, because I also feel nowadays we really focus on, on greater things, but I mean, I can say for a lot of friends that we are sometimes so focused on the media and we see so much sorrow and sadness that we even forget about, I don't know, just reaching your neighbor or a good friend and saying, hi, how are you doing today? You, you forget sometimes to reach somebody that's near, near you that you can actually share love because of this situation that we listen to so much uh, problems, you know, from the media and other things that you, you kind of get stuck on that. So sometimes we really needed to connect the spirituality in the sense that something good is going to happen, that you have expectation to improve your life. You have expectation to learn more. You have expectation to go do some exercise, to do something that's beneficial for you. And then when you have this mindset that's better, you can actually benefit others with the information that you have, with the good things that you can, you can show to them, you know? I think there was a study done in Denmark, uh, probably mm -hmm. within the last 10 years, maybe 15, but regardless, the Danes were determined to be the happiest people in the world. And when they went in and started figuring out why are they, and it all came down to expectations. When we have our expectations set here and they're not met, we're unhappy. When our expectations yes. are here and they're constantly exceeded, we're happy. And when I start including in their faith and hope into my expectations, I see mm -hmm. that being a, a stronger determinant of where should my expectation really yes. be? You know, exactly. I hope to be a millionaire. Well, is that realistic? <laughs> I, I got to get that, that realism and I got to get, mm -hmm. well, am I capable of being Am I capable of being a millionaire? Yes. You know, so I have yeah. to get my capabilities. I There's a lot of different parts of this thing that are yes, training. Exactly. It's not and so. so <laughs> and, and I think you have an excellent topic there because you need somebody who can figure out, okay, you're going down the right road, but you need to be a little molded in some other areas yes. and a little educated more in this area. And, and, and anyway, so could, could you explain how that, that kind of all includes? Of course, of course. Of course. I, I also appreciate it that you mentioned about that because let's be very honest. Life is about goal. If you don't have goal, you don't have anything to, to live for. That's actually something that I notice even for myself and other people. But sometimes we, we try to build huge expectations without really planning our life. Like I mentioned in the other, other speech that we, we had, uh, we sometimes forget to, for example, clean our room or just do simple things. And we sometimes we go so much in this global perspective because there is also the problem, as I mentioned before, about the social media nowadays. We want some, sometimes to be so big and billionaire because everybody in the social media is billionaire, is rich, is famous. But sometimes we don't see that it's not about that. It's about like, can you clean your room? Are you really working? Are you really balanced the small things on your life? Are you really eating well? Are you going to your temple, whatever religion you are? Because we really need to have a spirituality, no matter the religion that you follow, you believe in. And those small steps are the most important because sometimes we want to project something that's even not natural to us. And that's the complexity of life, right? Sometimes we want it to be like you mentioned. I also see a lot of people, I want to be a billionaire. Why? Because I see some, everybody in social media is happy. That's not the case. You don't really know them behind the, the for example, the Instagram, right? And, and we really needed to check things that are feasible, things that we can do little by little and plan them. As I accept as you mentioned, what time am I going to sleep? Uh, did I clean my bedroom? Did I do this, this, this? And sometimes these small steps, they actually started to be more reasonable. And then you reach really a goal that you can plan. But you really needed to be conscious about that. Otherwise, you're going to set a huge goal, which already happened to me and I think happened to everybody. 
and then you don't reach that goal because you kind of sabotage yourself because sometimes it's so much in another level that you forget to clean your bedroom and then you know how you're gonna really reach that uh, be a billionaire if you cannot even clean your bedroom you know it's it's really further and you know we really need to balance because I think also and uh, now uh, the current society we are in is building too much expectation we are bombarded about too much information especially in the social media that we kind of lose the sense of what's really reasonable it was yeah. an admiral that gave a commencement address at university of texas oh, within the last 10 years and one of the mm -hmm. things that he brought up was making your bed first thing in the morning when you get up why because it's a positive accomplishment you have exactly. done something your day starts out with success yeah. Exactly. And when we don't have that and you start incrementally saying, well, I'll, I'll get it later. I'll, I'll clean the dishes later. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll brush my teeth thing. later. It's just we have these little incremental things that develop into habits that we don't really make that leap into the next area. Exactly. And when you and when you talk about the balance, there's so many parts of our lives that we really don't even concentrate on. I think spirituality is one that you know if we're looking finance and relationship and health and yeah. but when that little dip comes down and we look out well there's a big piece missing in my balance of my spiritual life yeah how, how do we improve that oh i think that you need to have agenda you really need also to work and do therapy i recommend everybody to do therapy because even for myself i start to do that and one big point that i also want to say and this is even something that happened to myself, we all have our turning point. Everybody have their own turning point. I think that there is a huge problem nowadays in society uh, that we want to push people. And I also realize with some friends or the people that I know that you want to push them and say, oh, this is good, but they are not really ready for that. They didn't pass to that turning point that they need to pass. And you need to respect that as well, because you know, you cannot push people, oh, this is good for you. They needed to decide by themselves and and i think that when it comes to that we really needed to make people to show to them example for example i'm trying really uh, as hard as i can to have my life you know getting better 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 so that at least i can also show to the others that look this is really a good way because sometimes people they need the example right and they need their time and i think that that's something that we really needed to to focus on and yeah i hope i didn't uh I didn't went too far from your question, but yeah, I just addressed some of their topics as well. I, I, no, that was great. I'm just wondering in, in mentoring, do you ever see any correlation between people who are very successful, whatever that means, and, and a certain level of embracing spirituality? So yes. in other words, if, okay, can you tell us more yeah. about that? Yes, I think that's important because, as I mentioned, when you have your strong and uh, resilient mind, instead of, for example, of course, we all need social media today, especially today after the COVID, right? We all need social media because even about business, you need that. But when you try, when you balance well this with, especially the sense of social media and really planning everything, because that's also something uh, very important we really focus in people that are very successful and i mean i respect and i value that but we also needed to value the 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 common man the common folk right the person that really have a minimum of everything in life that's actually the person that really gonna have a balanced life that have all the things when it comes to spirituality to affection to relationship to sociability the person that have that minimal balance because sometimes we value these big people that again they have the reason to be there but sometimes when you look at their life, there is a lot of examples that we can see that they have problems with drugs and this kind of things that we really needed to also look and understand this, this, those perspectives. And when it comes to success, as you were mentioning, uh, I do believe that that's very important because when you have somebody that have their own spirituality intact, that they go to the temple, they really have a time, even if they don't go to a religious temple, they believe in their own God, for example, but they have a time really to do their prayers. They have that time to, for example, go to, I don't know, to a reclusion and have this time to just experience nature. And they do this in a way that's constant. Of, of course, not everybody is able to do every day that. Let's be very honest. Not everybody is able to do. But when you have this time that you really connect with, with our, our nature, 
our spiritual our sense of faith that's very important also to you really go back and see am i doing really right am i really valuing this fine am I really coping with what i really believe because it's very it's very easy especially nowadays a lot of famous people that i also met that they do things but their spirituality is not well they don't feel happy to do what they're doing and one time that's going to crash in one way or another for example they could have problems with their family because they are not really being realistic and pure with their own self on the work that they are doing on the the ideas that he's promoting or the things that he 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 teaches or speak about for example so that's very you brought, important you brought up several interesting thoughts there in the process of explaining that i appreciate it but you talked about being in touch with nature i lived in germany in the late 90s and the folks marches the, the in through the, the the trails through the the trees and the forest all over the place i mean it's just a, a massive focus on nature but then you also have the culture too because there's a culture you get poland over there that is is very dominantly catholic yet you go south mm -hmm. of there into the czech republic and now you have a very high percentage of atheists and so you end up with a border that has you know you may have relations on that side of the border uh two generations back and now there's just it seems like no matter how you try to to weave this thing in yeah i understand what i need but but culturally mm -hmm. Uh, your peer pressure. There's just so many things that that yeah. get in the way. That's, distractions. That's very true. How do you how do you how do you fight those distractions? Wow, that's <laughs> that's I think is the one million question, right? Well, I can say for myself, even uh, I'm been in a process of transition. I was in one field, which is development, and going more with the present development. There is a lot of things that intertwine; they're connected, but there are also things that. I say now that a lot of pe people from my previous field, they, they disagree. And that's actually where is the point that I think when it comes to the resilience and the perspective of learning and also improving your mind when it comes to the things that you feel more connected with. Because we cannot make everybody happy. Let's be very honest. We cannot make everybody approve us. And there is this sense, as you mentioned, especially when it comes to... Uh, spirituality that's that's complicated because you have institutions and you have the sense of spirituality and people sometimes they are from the exactly same religion but they have a different take on what religion believe i mean i have several examples from people that i met from several religion and one of them say a and the other one say b and i think that's that's where it comes especially when when the topic of religion that we need to look the philosophical perspective of the religion. Of course, we need also to understand religions and as institutions, but you need to look the philosophy because when you look, especially for like more Asian uh, religions, for example, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, we have a tendency to look more them into a philosophy of life. But when you look, especially Catholics or Protestants, we don't, we look them more like institution. And I think that's also very important, especially it's a, Part of process that I'm passing now, we, we need also to learn a bit more of their philosophy and even a bit of their books to understand a bit more the idea. Because, you know, it's very easy that you look and say, okay, but this, this institution, this religion did that, but you don't really understand the lines between the philosophy because we are all humans and humans have different thoughts. So again, I told you, it's it's very complicated. I'm I'm trying to just paint a picture here, but again, as you mentioned, I know even friends who are Catholic and they just showed me amazing perspective of Catholicism. That's also why I'm going back. But I know also others that they're really not <laughs> that much like uh, uh, in a good way. Let me say that they would understand. So we really needed to understand more the understanding and read more by, by ourselves and get in the sense. So that we can kind of like try to build up a line. I think that would be the way that I see it. Tiago, my father probably gave you the best advice mm -hmm. of my entire life. Well, I'm a Catholic. And at some okay. point in time, I was having a little problem. But the problem wasn't with the church. And he says, okay. you know, I was trying to explain to him what I was having difficulty with. Mm -hmm. And he said, I mean, well, I didn't even think. He says, don't confuse the church with the people running the church. Don't confuse the church with the administration. Yeah. And when yeah. you take all of a sudden, everything became crystal clear. 
you know, if I'm upset at what's going on, it's because this person's ego is getting in the way of whatever. Yeah. I'm standardized on the precepts of my religion, and I know right from wrong. I know what the moral good is. Then that that's fine. Just because this particular pastor or priest or whatever may happen to be has a different way of doing yeah. things. I mean, I don't. I go to another Catholic church, you know, four or five miles further down the road. But regardless if you were getting our experiences based on the people we're dealing with and their interpretation, their egos, their, their world, then we start having a problem understanding spirituality yes. because we're disconnecting our true belief into something that's artificial because that person yeah. is here right now dictating their understanding. Cause you said, yeah, you may have different religions and they believe two different a and B. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I think that uh, I actually have a very interesting point that I see, and even when I was working with the angels, and I respect that on that on them as well. We sometimes, even when I was working on them, I had also the sense that we want sometimes to work so much in the global perspective, but we don't even look to ourselves or to a specific locality. And even when I was working with them, I started to wonder because that also went to my spirituality. When I started to work with some angels locally from Africa and Asia, but like really people that they're just uh, starting to do their own things and they have this NGO and they really wanted to empower their own community. I start to realize how much, how much love they had to that. And I see that sometimes when it comes to some big organizations that have, again, there's people and people, but there's a lot of people that they just become mechanical that because oh, I'm doing global, but you know, I'm just doing this and I have a good money, etc. But when it comes to the local community, sometimes they have so much love and so much things to do, and a lot of people forget about them. And then when I start to realize that, I, I, I started to look also to myself and feel, wow, I'm not even looking to myself, because we have sometimes, especially nowadays, this strong perspective to look so much the global, but don't look the local or, example, ourselves first, then to promote others, that we really just live in this global perspective, even kind of losing ourselves. And it, it was happening to me as well. I, I worked with a lot of projects that I'm very proud of, but sometimes I even felt, am I really doing something that really, that really also benefit me and the others well? And then sometimes I felt that I wasn't really being also real, that real to myself. And that's also the challenge because it also affects the global perspective of things. So, I mean, when we, when we build ourselves strong and have this sense of of, okay, now I'm well, now I have a financial situation that's that's fine, that I can really help people, etc. Then you can go to the global perspective, then you can go and benefit others. But you need also have this perspective as yourself or your community to go beyond than that. Otherwise, you can have a frustration in the global perspective and then you feel, no, but it's, it's them, etc. But you don't see that sometimes it's just about us. Like we, we create a lot of problems for ourselves and we, we need to balance this perspective that the, the individuality and the local, as I mentioned also for the Joes, it's as important and much important as the global. Because if you have those things well established, then you can go beyond and cross the border and go to other people and do better things. And that was the thing that I felt for myself. And I also seen a lot in the time that I was working with uh, development. Tiago, thanks for sharing that. Something that's come to my mind, and I'm just wondering what your thoughts are. I'm wondering, is there a connection between spirituality and simplicity? And I'll give an example. So I remember in the past, I would say to people, I'm never going to be rich, you know, in terms of the bank account, because it's really not that important to me. And they would say, you already are rich. You're rich in so many ways that have nothing to do with money. And I feel today my life, even though you might not think so, but I feel it's so much more simple than it used to be before. Yes. It just seems so much more simplistic. And I was thinking, I feel like my spirituality has grown and my life simplicity has also grown. So I don't know. Is there a tie in there? Yes, totally, 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 totally. I can say even I, I had... Uh... I was doing a, a therapy with one of my colleagues and she was also mentoring me and we start to talk about that. And that's definitely the true. We, of course, everybody have their challenge and things like that, but we forget one point. We are responsible for our situation, no matter what, even if you unconsciously do that because something, because there is also a very interesting point here. A lot of things that I teach and 
are given to society, sometimes there is a lot of wrong things that are within that. And then we just perpetuate them because it's just culturally acceptable, but we don't really think about them because they are just there because it's okay. And then when you started to do really this inner, uh, start to check your thing, uh, your situation, and even when I was doing with uh, my therapist, also mentor and colleague, about checking my traumas, and we started to read some materials about that, I realized that's very important because life is simple. And the point about you being able to wake up and be alive is a rather victory. But we are so <clears throat> in this sense of nowadays to be so much and so much and billionaire, etc. And you need to go to, I don't know, a very rich country. You need to go to Dubai. You need to go to Europe to be rich. But sometimes just the fact that you are alive, that's the most spiritual divine thing that happened. And you have, and, and for example, even for me, I, I, I wasn't really so much connected with my family at that time. And then I started to say, you know what? I'm going to just share love to my family because they're my family. I don't know if tomorrow or I don't know if what's going to happen today with them. I don't know what's going to happen with me tomorrow. But if I'm able now and I have a time, I'm going to share them love. If they accept or not, that's up to them. But I know that I did a good deed. And that's the small things that we need to take because there is so much complexity in our societies that we forget the small things. We forget just to, like you mentioned, wake up. Example, uh, one colleague told me, I think it's just so funny and that's so real. You wake up and you try to smile. That changes your whole day. That's just so funny because even for me, sometimes I just feel like, why should I smile? But that affects your whole day because why? You just wake up. You are alive. You have a chance to change your life. And that's very important. Life can be and is simple if we want to. Thank you. Great answer. Yeah. Red, was... any comment you'd like to make about that? Simplicity and spirituality? I think you kind of hit a major portion of that on the head because when we get derailed, we're taking our simplistic baseline and adding a lot of distractions and things to it we don't need. And we're focusing on the wrong things in life. He's talking about personal development. You know, whether the other person loves you back or not, it's immaterial. You've, you've gone that way and shared what yeah. you want so that you're feeling good. That smile, that, that inner feeling, that, that grace that you have that makes you a better person. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that you had a very, very good point when you asked that question, and I like the way he covered it. Uh, my kind of question that came out of that was, how do you assess somebody, your personal development mentor, mm -hmm. okay, and you meet somebody, how mm -hmm. do you go about assessing where are, where are they? Because as you said, life is so complex. There's so many different things going yeah. on. I, I assume you have some kind of checklist or you have some kind of series of questions that kind of give you the, the, the but, but tell us how do you typically go about assessing and then being able to say, okay, yeah. you really need to, to focus on or give us that kind of idea of how do you do your personal developing yeah. mentoring? I think the most important thing is that you show that there is somebody as real as you in the other side. Because that's also very important when it comes, especially with people with trauma and especially with therapy, because, I mean, you're going to take people that, of course, they have a they have a problem. They're open to do that because if the person go for you and they already show to you that they want to learn with you, that already is a very good thing because they are open to that. And that's the first step. But I believe the most important is really to focus on the being that's on the other side and really have a conversation with the person in the way that he or she understand that He's talking to a person. Okay, that person have probably uh, more education. I mean, I, I'm going to hopefully finish my second master now, and that's very important. But I mean, it's not about my education. It's not about my title. It's about, uh, for me as a professional, to connect with that person in the same level. And when it comes to this connection, you just need to be like a normal person, really have a conversation with that other person, and then try to assess, especially from what I believe in, assess uh, things that could be, for example, a trauma that the person has or stuff like that. And then you try to build a parameter to, to work on that. That's very important. But I think the, the first step is to show to that person, look, even if I'm professional here, even if I am, let me say, the authority when it comes to this specific matter that you're reaching me and you pay for me, you really 
needed to show to that person that there is another person on the other side. It's not about my title. It's not about my education. It's not about the fact that I'm from Brazil and I live in Hungary in Sweden and I've been even to countries like Iraq or Kosovo, for example, which I've been, which is interesting to say that. It's about me being a human that have my experience and you, another person that have your experience, let's share and let's understand each other. And then I give you uh, the thoughts that I have about that. There's a whole show just in that last, those last comments yeah. that you made. Because <laughs> I, I think a lot of people from fear, from embarrassment, whatever, they don't want to say what they want to say. So you have to, as you're, 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 you're de developing the trust of saying, yeah. you know, there, there really is another person and you're trying to show that in yourself. And it just, it's, it's, it's a major obstacle, I think, in order yeah. to get to of that. Of course. I yeah, mean, a business, yeah. yeah, you have things you can relate to, but you start getting into a personal end of things and that, that's a difficult nut to crack. It really is. Yes, definitely. I think you, you really touch a, a point because I see so many cases of people that I work with that they, when they talk at some things that I pass it, because for example, I told you guys about the, the kidnapping, but I seen other things. When I'm just honest and I tell them, a lot of people just get shocked and they say, why you don't have that? No, I don't have that. But when you started to dig a little bit, everybody have their trauma. Everybody have really sensible matters. Of course, some people don't want to share. Other people want to share easily. For example, I'm more outspoken when it comes to that. But I think that especially when you put yourself to a therapist or a psycho psychologist or even like a psych psychiatrist and all these people connected also you have also coaching and mentoring you really needed to know that when you face that you needed to be honest and that's actually a point that you touched that i think it's very important we sometimes try to hide things for example, uh, uh, one point that came also to my mind, and I see especially with the Catholic Church, when it comes to confession, I, I also, I'm, I'm going back to the church. I have a lot of situations when it comes to that, and I also need to do confession. And I was talking to my friend, and they really saw as well a lot of people that they have really problem to do the confession. But I mean, if you put yourself in that situation, you need to be honest and trust the other side. If you don't have trust, then you don't, you don't, you don't really belong to that religion, or you don't do that therapy you simply just understand that you cannot do because you really needed to do that otherwise you don't go uh, uh, let me say to another perspective and that's really when it comes to the uh, res resilience sorry <laughs> and uh and this perspective to change comes because when we open about our life even for me when i open about my life when it comes to some other sensible matters that's very tough but when you do that, when you, you have a person that you can really take it out, wow, you became somebody else. I, I mean, I cannot see myself. I, I, I'm going to be very honest. If I looked to myself maybe one year ago, I wouldn't recognize myself. Ah. If I imagine the plans that I have in my life, I wouldn't recognize myself at all. And that's the process about it because I have this process of cleaning. I have the process that I was like, you know what? I'm going to be very open. Even I believe I did too much, but that was very relevant that built something unique to me because i really recognize that with all the respect of law all the law education that i have and all this idea that i have about law it wasn't really law that was my my goal my goal was really to talk to people do what i'm doing here with you guys and you know just have this conversation that's what i really love to do well i think you're doing an excellent job thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much I would really love for you to to let people know you're available to work with them and you can work yeah. with people all over the world. How does that work? Yes, of course. They can reach me through my Facebook page. It's Tiago uh, Pedin. So it's Tiago, T-I-A-G-O, S from Sierra. And it is B-E-D-I-N-N for November. That's my Facebook. So yeah, you can reach there. That's the easiest way. Uh, last time I mentioned about my Instagram, but the Facebook is definitely the best way uh, to message me. And are you open to working with new clients? Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm always open and always interested to learn from new people and, and gather. So everybody who's wondering to talk to me about maybe a project or maybe also reach about something that they want to do, I mean, please feel free to reach me. I, I always like and I love to connect with people. 
Thank you so much, Tiago. And I, I'd love Thank to you. have you back. I'm thinking of another topic, which might be crazy, but I'm thinking what, if any, <laughs> is the relationship between religion and spirituality and yeah. someone who's an atheist and spirituality? Ooh. Is there? <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a very interesting. That's a very interesting topic. We we need to talk that, especially, I think in in the modern society, we really needed to bring the spirituality. I think we really lack in this. And as I mentioned, it's you know, it's it goes beyond that just religion. It really goes to the thing about faith and really thinking that you just wake up and you are alive. That's some sense of faith and spirituality because you know that you can do something on that day. You know, you can improve your life no matter what. And that's just uh, divine to me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've run out of time for this particular episode, and we've got a show right after this. So, Tiago, thank you so much for being yeah, here. And right. um, yeah. I know you're booked in or you're booking in for another show or two, so we'll look forward to having you oh, back. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye Take bye. care. Have a good evening. Thank you, guys. Bye. I know. I really enjoyed it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Red, you have your episode coming up. And for people who don't know what you're going to be talking about today on Talking Heads, give us a preview, please. Toxins. For the last five weeks, we've talked about toxins in many different aspects. Uh, we're talking about those things that do harm to the body. Uh, we've been through labels. We've been through different chemicals. We've been through references, been through a lot of different things over the last five weeks. So today we're going to wrap this whole thing up and talk to you about, well, what can we really do about it? Uh, and sometimes toxins are not necessarily the lead that you get poison or mercury or something like that. Sometimes it may be just something as simple as sugar because we could become addicted to it and that addiction can lead to some serious harm in the body. But like any kind of problem we have, we also need to look at what are the causes of that problem and what are some of the solutions? And along the way, what should be we uh, be aware of? And so I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and then at the very, very end, I'm going to talk about what are the real options we have? If I love uh, the Bloomin' Onion at the Australian uh, restaurant, I can't think of the name of it, right? Outback. Um, can I make that at the house and make it healthier than what they're doing? Can I do the same thing with, you know, my wife makes ice cream with four ingredients and it is great. But when I take a look at a label and it has 22 ingredients on it, is that really what I want? So anyway, that's kind of where we're going today, and we're going to wrap it up. But the other shows, all five of them, are on the USA Global TV and Radio Network in the archives on YouTube. And and please join me, and we'll we'll get through this toxin thing very, very quickly. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, Red, I look forward to producing the show for you, and I'll see you backstage momentarily. Okay, uh, I will catch you backstage immediately after the show then. All right. Thanks again. Bye. And thanks to each and every one of you who are watching or listening on the live or the replay. We invite you to be a guest on our shows. It's so easy. Go over to our website, usaglobaltvandradio.com or usaglobaltv.com. They will both get you there. Look for book your session and please book in on any of the shows where you don't need an invitation from the co-host. We have some shows that are really uh, run separately by people who have their own show on our platform. So otherwise, we're happy to have you join us. And we are signing off, as I mentioned, for our next show, which is Talking Heads. We'll be back shortly. Thank you so much. Bye, Tiago.